control clustering. In that, uh, you stored uh, entire document in a single row, where each column represents a single word. Now, to maintain the proximity or to maintain the relations with other words, the only method we discussed was related to ontology. Means, uh, for each word, the author of that paper calculated the ontological relations with all other words present in the document and then use that ontological or semantic score with that word. But the problem is, can you use page based system with vector space model or document vector model? Means, uh, instead of uh, using words only, can you use pages? For example, suppose uh, before starting, I am just giving this example. Suppose this is a matrix. Each row represents uh, one document. Now, each column represents words. But the problem is, suppose you have a page like this. three different pages. If you use the word based feature, then you will use, uh, then you will lose, lose your, the local context of the pages. For example, Taj Mahal hotel has nothing to do with Taj Mahal. Same happens with uh, Taj Mahal tea also. So, all, all things are different. So, if you use the word based, bag of word based features with uh, document vector model then you will lose such kind of information. So, if you want to preserve this information, then how you will go through? What type of problem you will face? Can you think? Just start thinking. So, just think that uh, instead of word, if we start using such, sorry, such type of phrases, in place of this word, then what type of problem we will face and uh, what will be the possible research ideas, because this is a current research problem that uh, how can you utilize the phrases with document vector model, because uh, phrases preserves the local, local context of word, local context of means information. Actually, this is a current research problem. A uh, lot of people are working on such kind of uh, problems. If you start using phrases in place of word, first problem is phrase identification. Phrase identification is also a problem. If you think the ideality of solution, means ideal solution, if you uh, start imagining about uh, ideal solution, then after placing the phrase in place of word, you may achieve the ideal solution because in that case your matching will be more perfect. Suppose one document are related to Taj Mahal, other documents are related to Taj Mahal tea. In both cases some word fragments will match and if you give some 40 percent, 50 percent similarity, then they may consider that both documents are similar. For example, suppose you search uh, such type of things on uh, 
Google, then you will get same kind of results. Because uh, due to this uh, loss of information, which contains uh, such phrases, you may get uh, poor results. So, first problem is phrase identification. How can you identify the phrase, phrases? What are the different techniques to identify the phrases? To solve this issue, Google contains some Google API with list of words, all words they are using, but uh, this is not enough. And next problem is, suppose you write phrases, then due to the writing strategy, different writing strategy, people may use different, different phrases or terms in document to represent the same thing. For example, one document contain, for example, a documents are related to gun. One document contains phrase like class in cob rifle, another document contains phrase like AK-47. Both are same thing, but due to difference in writing strategies, your all matching is techniques will fail. And your clustering algorithm will consider that both documents are uh, discussing about different, different things. So, this is one problem. This problem occurs with word based system also, but in the case of phrases, the problems is more difficult. And another thing is, phrases, length of phrases may differ. For example, there may be two word phrase. This is three word phrase, two word and three word phrase. Some phrase may, may be just, may contain just single word. Their occurrence frequency may also differ. Then how can you adjust such kind of different, different length phrases with different occurrence frequency in such kind of pattern? Because it is already, people already assume that if uh, there is any system which utilize such kind of phrases, in place of simple document vector model, then it will give better result. But these are the problems. So, if you are able to solve these problems, then you will come up with uh, very good solutions or very good systems. So, this is a starting point of discussion and today I will try to cover some research questions and uh, I will also try to make focus on how to solve those research questions with the help of classification, classification techniques. So, first of all I will go through classification techniques, better class uh, means some basic classification techniques like uh, Rokio classification, uh, nearest neighbor classifications, SBM based classification and I will demonstrate how to use VECA to achieve those classification techniques and after that. I will go through some research questions. For example, uh, you know email spam, about email spam means how can you use the classification techniques to achieve a better solution to reduce the email spamming. Again, there is a readability problem. Suppose you have a given a text and you have to identify the readability of that text. How classification problem, classification techniques can be used to solve these problems. Another techniques may be like uh, author, author identification. Suppose you have a given a small fragment of text and uh, the question, you have to solve the question like uh, who is the author of those fragments. So, how can you solve these problems through text classification techniques? Another may be related to sentiment analysis. For example, suppose there is an election scenario and you have a lot of resources like newspaper, tweets, blogs. Based on those, the classification techniques for prediction. So, I will go through some simple, simple problems. 
these all problems are new problems and after that sentiment analysis based techniques. So, first of all I am going to start with vector space classification. So, vector space classification generally use the vector space representation of documents. It represents each document as a vector with one valued component usually use TF IDF weight for each terms. These are some important points like uh, training set is a set of documents each labeled with class. You already know the training set, test set, validation set for classification. In vector space classification this set corresponds to level set of points in the vector space. So, the first two premises are documents in the same class form a contiguous region of space and documents from different classes do not overlap much. This is similar to the clustering concept in a cluster inside the cluster point shows maximum similarity with respect to other intra cluster points sorry inter cluster points. For example, here uh, red dots represents the document vector for documents representing the government related information blue dot represents the documents related to science and black dots represents the documents related to arts. Now, the problem of classification is suppose we have given this new document we have to classify this document means uh, whether it belongs to government class, science class or arts class. So, simple technique may be divide the entire region such that this division points are equidistant from each points from different different classes. Like that and after that check the region where this document lies. Some techniques are like uh, for high dimensional points suppose a document contains very high, dim um, high dimensional information then there are some techniques called projection technique you can reduce the dimension by using projection techniques. If you are uh, using MATLAB then you can use just achieve the projection related uh, function by using 2-3 lines of code. For example, this is a 2D projection to 1D. This is a 2 dimensional points given in a circle. This is x1 x 2, x 3 and x 4 and x 5. This is one dimensional projection of the points. If points contain some sufficient distance then projection also shows uh, slightly identifiable margin. So, it uh, slightly generally it preserves the marginal gap means at least minimum marginal gap between the points and it reduces the computation complexity also because as you increase the number of dimension your computation task will be more uh, costly. Similarly, this is example of 3D projection here uh, points uh, given in some spherical surface are projected in a simple circle 
this is 3 d to 2 d projection, this is uh, 3 d d hemisphere to 2 d circle. So, such by using such kind of technique you can reduce the dimension and uh, this is just a informative that uh, how can you reduce uh, means uh, reduce the inform means uh, dimension and uh, improve the classification speed. Now, I will go through the Rokio text classification. This is the initial basic text classification. If you want to know the depth means uh, want to go through the in depth knowledge of machine learning, it is not possible to cover all things uh, with text mining topic. So, I will just cover three different topics. If you are interested in uh, broad range of machine learning, then you can uh, go through uh, website like uh, there is a Tom Mitchell book for machine learning. He is professor of CMU and his current course video lectures on machine learning is available on it. I am just showing the simple net, 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 net. net connection. कोई सेटिंग रिक्वायर होता है? ओके ओके। जस्ट सर्च ऑन नेट टॉम मिचेल। Machine Learning Course 2011, Video Lectures, this is CMU Video Lectures on Complete Machine Learning Course. If you want uh, very depth knowledge of machine learning, they can, then you can go through this lectures. I will cover two important parts of, I am also covering the machine learning part from his book, because this is only standard textbook available on machine learning. But uh, to understand, properly understand the content of entire lecture, you should have knowledge of mathematical probability statistics and uh, some computational mathematics like uh, Gaussian mixture model like type of things, linear algebra and solid geometry. If you have a complete knowledge of those topics, only then you can understand those lectures. Now, Rokio text classification, some important points. It uses a standard TF IDF weighted vectors to represent the text documents. For training documents in each category, it computes a prototype vector by summing up the vectors of the training documents in the category 
and prototype is equal to centroid of the members of the class. This is the most important point. Actually, Rokiotex classification just considers the centroid of the class to check whether it, it will belong to the particular class C1 or belongs to the class C2. Just as uh, used in uh, k means clustering algorithm, just uh, you just check the whether what is the distance of any point from a given center and then you class then after that you categorize that this point will go to cluster C1, this point will go to cluster C3 like that. This uh, is similar kind of thing with classification and here similarity measures, cosine similarity measures are used. So, you already know the cosine similarity measures, this is a simple example, example how cosine similarity measures work. Here D1 represents the document and D2 represents another document and Q represents the query. Simi cosine similarity between documents and query is calculated here and cosine similarity between document D2 and query is calculated here. To classify it, first of, first of all we identify the centroid. Yeah, yeah. I will go through the uh, example, then it will clear. So, this is example, I am just uh, saying that I am using cosine similarity measure. So, I will explain everything, everything through the angle, similarity angle. So, this is angle and here in this case red, repre red arrow represents the document of same class and this new red arrow, the resultant red arrow represents the centroid. Now, for blue documents, another documents labeled as blue, this is centroid. So, we have initially labeled data that these documents are related to a class here represented as a red color and these are the documents represented as a class labeled as blue. So, there are two different classes and these are the centroid calculated by this Rokio text classification technique. Now, suppose another document represented here as a black arrow. To identify that whether this document will belong to this category or this category, red document category or blue document category, we will calculate identify the similarity cosine similarity angle. Suppose this is theta 1 and this is theta 2. Here it is clear that this document shows higher similarity with centroid representing the blue documents. So, this will go through the class labeled as blue documents. Got it? So, initially we have two different labels, one label represents the documents related to one level is documents of blue classes and other is related to document of red classes. So, classification techniques, technique first calculate the centroid for each level okay, with training data set and now suppose we have to classify some documents. So, here we started with a single document then we calculate the cosine similarity with the centroid of the labeled all label data sets. There are here there is only two label data sets, label first level represents the documents related to red color, second level is related to documents related to blue color. So, the angle 
here the angle shows that it shows a small angle with blue color with blue centroid of blue color documents. So, we will assign that document to the blue color document. This is a simple tendency. So, this is very simple and very similar to clustering k means type of clustering algorithm. No, no, this is training. Yeah, calculation is very simple. Yes. So, your training set will contain the proper training example. This is the problem of this algorithm also. Means, suppose your document set varies from training range, then it will misclassify that document. Means, uh, your training set will contain complete information about the data, only then it will work better. Means, suppose you have a different different set of books, suppose you have a all books of physics and all books of mathematics, then your training set will contain all the sample or type of physics book, all the sample or type of mathematics book, only then after that the system will calculate the centroid, similarity centroid for physics books and for mathematics book. Suppose you put a new book, you do not know whether it is related to mathematics or physics, then based on the distance, angular distance from both centroid, it will identify whether it belongs to math document or physics document. So, this is simple calculation stage. Here, the role of training is very limited just to take the label data and calculate the centroid and test phase, test and validation phase is just check whether it assigns the correct things or not. So, now this is the training part. We assume that the set of categories are C1, C2, and Cn. Now, from I 1, I is equal to 1 to n, this is initial prototype vectors, we put 0 0 in initial stage and after that we will put like x and their class, means document and their class. This is a set of documents. Now, let uh, d be the frequency normalized T f i d f term vector for a document x and let uh, i is equal to j, where uh, c i is equal to means c j represents uh, belongs to the class c x. Sum all the document vector c i to get p i and after that you can use this method to calculate the centroid. You have a calculation of all p i plus d, here p i is the vector which represents the documents and their class and this document and for every document you calculate the TFIDF score for words in the given documents. Thus here by using this information, here P i will store the TFIDF score for each word of every single document and based of this information we generally calculate the median. Here DC is the set of all documents that belongs to class C and BD is the vector space representation of document D. In that vector space representation, each such vectors will contain for example, this is a vector space representation for any given document D 1, this is word W 1 W 1 1. I will store their TF-IDF score and this TF-IDF score will go there. We calculate the sum and divide it by total number of documents in that class. Got it? And based on this, we calculate the median. This is the training phase. I already explained that the role of training phase is just to calculate the median of the given set and this is the process to calculate the median of given set. Now, the test phase. 
Now, the test page is just to check whether how distance, how similar the given documents are with median and then assign the category. So, this is the test page. Given a text document X, let D be the TFIDF weighted term vector of given document X. I already assign, I already discussed that how can you calculate the centroid and by using sorry by using the centroid how can you calculate the cosine similarity measures this is here. For example, the if you represent the document into document vector model then here you, you will have TFIDF score got it and this is used to calculate the similarity. So, now this is the text page, test page. So, let the document be the TFID a weighted term vector of x. Just uh, uh, one fix one mini, uh, one maximum cosine similarity at initial stage. Now, from i is equal to 1 for all given documents that you have to test, compute the similarity of prototype vectors. Let s is equal to cosine similarity of document D with pi here p i represents the median of that class. If s is greater than m, this is the minimum or maximum frequency threshold initial. If it is better means better than that, then put that new document into that particular and then put that new similarity threshold with m and uh, assign that documents to class r. This is very simple as I discussed earlier. For example, suppose this is a median of class 1 and uh, this is median of class 2 and this is new document. If it shows different different similarity measure, different different cosine similarity score and this is our threshold. Here in the algorithm it is put as it is just initially initialized as minus 2 we can change it and suppose our threshold is greater than our this angle theta 2 and this is theta 1. Suppose theta 1 theta 2 uh, theta 1 shows uh, higher value than our threshold and then our